Hello boys and girls, welcome to another fun and exciting lesson in science and daily life. I am Sara Zamin. And I am Miss Riemann. I trust that you are fully prepared for our lesson today as we are moving on to electrical circuits and electricity. Now boys and girls, today we'll be looking at what is an electrical circuit. We'll also be looking at the components of a simple circuit and to differentiate between conductors and insulators. Now, boys and girls, can you remember the law of conservation of energy? Yes, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred or transformed from one type to the next. Now, boys and girls, have you ever experienced static electricity? Have you ever walked on your carpets or your rugs in your home? with a sock on maybe, and feel that there's some attachment there? Have you ever combed your hair with a comb and noticed that the hair strands are standing up? There are static electricity all around us. And today we will dive right into electricity. Nice, so <laughs> boys and girls, the rate of movement of electrons can be measured over a certain amount of time. The current is defined as the rate of charge movement or the movement of electrons through an area over a given amount of time. Now, boys and girls, I'm sure that you could have recalled in our previous lesson that we looked at charges, and charges can be either positive or negative. For electricity or a current, it is the flow of those negative charges. Now, the general definition of a circuit it's a closed path that may be followed by an electrical current. What is current? Current in a circuit is the flow of the positive charge from a high potential to a low potential. The source of energy in a circuit, which provides the energy to move the charge through the circuit can be a battery or a power supply. So what is an electrical circuit? An electrical circuit is a continuous part of wire and devices. Now, boys and girls, I would like you to take a look at a diagram of an electrical circuit. Try and identify the components of that circuit. Now, talking about components, boys and girls, let us dive right into that. Let us identify what are some components of a simple circuit. All electric circuits consist of three essential components. The power supply is used to provide electrical energy. A conducting part allows the electrons to flow around the circuit easily. Please note that electrons are negatively charged. Now, there's also a load which electrical energy is converted into another form of energy. When we talk about a load, we're simply saying maybe a light bulb. Now, boys and girls, I would like to direct your attention to the screen to examine the components of a circuit to look at their symbol, their function, as well as description. Now, let us talk about the first symbol. Here you can see we have a cell. It is used or it's the source of the current electricity. We also have a battery. It is made up of two or more joint cells together. This battery is made of three cells. The next symbol that we have there is a light bulb, and it is used to convert electrical energy into light and thermal energy. In addition, students, we have the motor, which is also used to convert electrical energy, but this time it's into mechanical energy. And lastly, we have a switch. It can be open to stop a current or close to allow current to flow. 
What is very important to note with our cell and battery boys and girls, if you look at the symbol, we have a long stroke as well as a short stroke. The long stroke would represent the positive side of the cell and battery, and the short stroke would represent the negative terminal of that cell or battery. We also have here an ammeter. An ammeter is used to measure current or the flow of electrons. We, you can see here we have the voltmeter, and it's used to measure the voltage or the potential energy. And we also have the resistor, which is a device that slows the flow of electrons. In addition, we have the ground connection, which connects the circuit to the earth. Now, boys and girls, I have an activity for you. Using those lists of symbols from our table, do you think you can draw a simple circuit using the circuit symbol? Let us get going with that. Now, boys and girls, the symbols that you will be using to draw that simple circuit will be your battery, wire, bulb, and switch. So let's get drawing. Welcome back, boys and girls. Now, let us take a look at the diagram as to what you should have drawn. Sometimes the flow of electrons is slowed down by a number of factors. These factors include the material in which is used, the temperature, the length, and the cross-section, meaning how wide the area is the electron is trying to move through. Let us take a look at the terms, conductors, and insulators. So what are conductors? What are insulators? Mm -hmm. Conductors, boys and girls, allow the flow of electrons, which means it allows electricity to be there, whereby an insulator oppose or stop the flow of electrons, meaning no electric current. Materials, therefore, that allow the easy flow of electrons are called conductors, whereby materials that do not allow the easy flow of electrons are called insulators. Now, boys and girls, I am sure our parents would have warned us at some point in time, do not play with current or do not play with electrical outlets. What are some things that your parents would have said, you know what, you're never to put these things in a, in a point or an electrical outlet. I am pretty sure they would have said no iron material, no forks, no spoon, because these are materials that will conduct electricity. Can you think of some items or materials that do not conduct electricity? Think about perhaps in your home you have had an exposed wire and your father or someone within the home may go and wrap it around with a certain material. I'm sure you have heard the name, it's an insulation tape. Of course, the word insulation comes from the word insulator because what that tape does is prevent an electrical shock. It stops the flow of electrons and it keeps it within that wire. Now, boys and girls, I have another activity for you. Let us take a look at the diagram on the board. Can we identify if they're conductors or insulator? Let us start with the first one. We have an eraser. What do you think it is? Is it a conductor or is it an insulator?
Yes, well done, boys and girls. It is an insulator. Next, we have the metal fan. Is it a conductor or an insulator? The word itself gives it away, a metal pen. And if you take that it's a conductor, then you are correct. The next item we have there is a paper envelope. Is it a conductor or an insulator? Definitely, yes, it is an insulator. Good job. Let's now move on to a pencil. Maybe that same pencil that you're writing there with. Is that a conductor or an insulator? What do you think? It's an insulator. Very good, boys and girls. Let us talk a little bit about the paper clip that we're seeing here. What do you think it is? Is it a conductor or an insulator? Yes, 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 and you are correct again. It is a conductor. Lastly, let's look at chalk. Is that a conductor or an insulator? What do you think? It is definitely an insulator. Good job, boys and girls. We looked at electrical circuits today and their components. We also talked about insulators and conductors. Until next time, I am Miss Riemann. And I am Sir Zamin. Bye-bye.